Welcome to Cloud City Conversations, a podcast all about our love for Star Wars and where all forms of Star Wars fans are welcome. This is episode two of Cloud City Conversations, and we have a wonderful soul with us today, Hannah, or you may know her better from her TikTok alias, Discount Book Tan. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Awesome. So on this podcast, we always start with a little introduction of how you discovered Star Wars, whether it was when you discovered as a child or maybe even a year ago. Like, tell us that, tell us the story of how you began to love this franchise. Yeah, for sure. Um, so when I was, I think, seven years old, um, my brother got a box set of the original trilogy for Christmas and I got a Barbie movie. Um, and I really wanted to watch the Barbie movie because that was my movie. Um, but mm-hmm. my family was around and, you know, Star Wars was was the universal pick as yeah. opposed to, you know, princess and the pauper. Um, so I, uh, I was I was upset about it. I was like, I want to watch my movie. I want my princess movie. And they were like, well, there's a princess in this one. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll give it a try. And I was kind of like, you know, complaining about it, not really satisfied. But then as soon as Leia showed up on the screen, um, I was happy. Uh, I was happy to continue. Um, and then I, you know, I was, I was sort of like a casual enjoyer of Star Wars from that point on. I never did see um, the prequel trilogy uh, as a kid. Um, but then, uh, you know, I had, I had watched the original trilogy. And when the sequels came out in uh, 2015, I was like, oh, I really want to go and see these. And it totally just revitalized my love for oh Star Wars. Oh my gosh, Wars. that's amazing. So you're a big sequels lover? I do love the sequels. I, I love the sequels as well. I personally, like, I, there's not a single bit of Star Wars media that I don't like. So like, mm-hmm. I can sit down and have like conversation with anyone about Star Wars and just like nerd out, whether it's right. sequels, prequels, like original trilogy, like whether you're 50 and love Star Wars or you're you now 13 and love Star Wars. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's one of the nice things about liking everything. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, this is probably going to be the most important question you've ever been asked in your life. Oh, are you ready for this? I'm so ready. How do you rank your Star Wars movies? OK. Um, <laughs> OK, it's a little controversial. Um, That's OK. We're here for the con- controversial. It's all perfect. valid. All right. All right. Hot take. Um, Last Jedi, number one. Yes. Empire Strikes Back, number two. Rogue One, number three. Ooh. A New Hope, number four. Rise of Skywalker, number five. Revenge of the Sith, number six. That's probably the most controversial one. I know. Seven is Force Awakens. Let's see, I believe eight. Oh, man, what am I missing? No, I'm missing. Oh, uh, Attack of the Clones. Yeah, uh, Return of the Jedi. Uh, oh, eight is Return of the yeah. Jedi. Oh. It's, it's low. Um, really? Yeah, eight is the Return of the Jedi. Nine is, nine is Solo. 10 is Phantom Menace, 11 is Attack of the Clones. Yeah, I, I have to put Attack of the Clones at the bottom too. It was my first Star Wars movie, but mm. I didn't even see the full movie. I just saw the Geonosis part and I was like, oh, When what? you're a kid, it, the it bar like, is so low and it so looks low. so cool. So I, like, there you go. I was a four-year-old boy and the Jedi <laughs> and desert planet lasers, I was blown away. But yeah, yeah. It, it, it's got to be the bottom. But I'm up. I'm really up there with you for the uh, Last Jedi. I really like the Last Jedi. I really I think, think it so gets good. too much crap. But yeah, and I understand why some people don't like it. But it's it's not for everyone. But if yeah, you're really it's probably set popular. on your Luke being your a very specific Luke, then I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I wasn't. You know, I like Luke a lot. But I was interested in seeing a different kind of Luke person. Yeah. Especially because I don't think he's that interesting in uh, Return of the Jedi. I really don't. He's He's mellowed out so much by then. And I yeah. really liked the, you know, the kid, the whiny kid from the first two movies. <laughs> See, a lot of people actually don't like the whiny kid. I'm like, I think it's like, him. it's like a hit or miss for, for a lot of people. Uh, but man, I feel like I walked out of the theater watching The Last Jedi, loving it. Mm-hmm. And I sat and I analyzed it and I was like, Ur! but then, then I've grown to love it more as I've watched it more and more again. Right. And like I'd learned like, okay, don't analyze every bit of the movie and just enjoy it and exactly like yes the canto bite thing it's kind of frustrating that it doesn't add up to very much but yeah. honestly i have fun watching it <laughs> it's it is a lot of fun and that throne room scene oh my god phenomenal it's so good it's and so then everyone good. has decided because it's the strongest part i would say of the movie that they don't like mm. they've decided they were like well we've got to analyze the fight choreography and make point out every single mistake that yeah. was in it. i was like did you forget the force kick 
from Return of the Jedi, the bar is kind of low, to be honest. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. And then when I first saw Rise of Skywalker, it was probably in my top three, but it's, it's fallen. It's fallen down as I've as as I've you think about it. It kind it's of fallen like, down. I mean, I walked the out of the theater, theaters like, what? What? Kanan it and blew Ahsoka? my mind. I was like, but like, my, and then like, even like out of the theater, my biggest gripe about the Rise of Skywalker was we should have gotten like an all, like all wings call in or whatever kind of scene with the, like imagine seeing like Hera and like, oh. I, like all those like wet, like you oh, saw wet. Chills like, thinking about it. Well, to be like honest, that, I hadn't yeah. seen Rebels when I watched Rise of Skywalker. Really? I've only seen Rebels in um, the past couple months here. What do you think of it so far? I I, I watched it. I finished it. I okay. I like it better than the Clone Wars. Um, I don't know why I waited so long. <laughs> yes, finally, someone else agrees with me. It's like it's been slowly edging past Clone Wars, and it finally edged past Clone Wars for me. Mm-hmm. And I think Rebels highs are just so stinking high. Spoilers if you haven't seen Rebels, uh, you just skip past this real part. But Kanan. Oh, oh, Kanan's Kanan. character is. He's Great. my second favorite character in all of Star Wars. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, hot take, right? Yeah, it, uh, I mean, it is hot, but I've heard it before. Like, mm-hmm. people really love Kanan. I'm not, I, I love Kanan. I am a much bigger Hera and Sabine yes. person. I love those two. I think mm-hmm. they kick so much butt. Um, especially yeah. the the Trials of the Darksaber oh. arc. I, I, mm-hmm. I was fine with Sabine before that. But after the Trials of the Darksaber arc, Oh, I was just, I loved her so much after that. Sabine's great. And then we we got to love our um, war criminal chopper. So <laughs> Have you seen the videos of like chopper, like giving him subtitles? No, I haven't. Look it up after this. Oh God. There is, there is a videos where you give chopper subtitles and it just sounds like, you can't unhear it. He's just swearing. He's dropping the <laughs> f bomb here. Uh, he's like, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. I've seen like tweets about like the the beeping in R two uh R two D 2s beeping is actually it's a mm. bleep noise because he's just swearing the whole time. <laughs> that that sounds great too. But like it it almost sounds like Chopper is saying the words because he's oh and gosh. so. It's like, oh gosh. It's like those bad lip reading videos. Yes. Like, oh, I hear it now. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Um, yeah. So, all right. So here's my first question that's specific to you. I okay. see you on TikTok with the uh, Bogotan Lego earrings. Yes. What gave you the idea to make those? Those are incredible. I didn't make them. I oh, didn't, didn't make them. Oh, you didn't? Um, so I do make my own earrings every once in a while, mm-hmm. but it's usually like a little plastic rubber animal that I've had in my basement mm-hmm. since I was a kid. I actually got them from my friend's Etsy store. Um, she makes all of these Lego Star Wars earrings. Mm-hmm. I have like eight. I'm addicted. Um, it's far, oh uh, far, far away factory yeah. on, on Etsy. And I I just, I can't stop buying them. I really can't. It's kind of become a problem. I got like... <laughs> I've got a pair of Grogu, Lego Grogu in the pram. I've got um, mm. Lego Vaders. I've got, what else do I have? And Lego Ahsokas. Um, and then just like an, a different pair of earrings from her store, which are the the uh, Rebel insignia, but they're glittery. Um, it is like, it, it is my guilty pleasure going on that. <laughs> and wow. just getting all those if, earrings. If I was an earring kind of guy, I would definitely buy some. They're so great, yeah yeah i mean oh i'm i'm tempted just to buy the ahsoka ones just f- for the lols just ahsoka even, is my favorite character yeah i mean even to she gets them off of like i don't even know what it's like not an official lego mm-hmm. website i don't think but like you can buy all of these awesome like mini figures um yeah. try, get them shipped from china or something and they've got like some cool ones on there that's incredible so yeah, yeah. So I've seen your uh, first order cosplay, officer cosplay. Yeah, Do it's you have any of, t- technically it's a Hux cosplay. Hux, okay. Yes. So, do you have any other cosplays other than that? I do. So oh, I, no. um, I, <laughs> I had an Anakin cosplay for a very long time, <laughs> and it was well. I have a friend who's very serious about her cosplay. Right, she's mm-hmm. part of the um, the Rebel Legion, which is 
um, the official Lucasfilm licensed uh, charity cosplay organization. Oh. So when children who are in the hospital want to meet Luke Skywalker, they send one of their cosplayers. Um, so she so is an officially licensed Ray. Um, it's so called, yeah, it's, it's like, like the 501st Legion is the dark side version, which is like those officially yeah. licensed. They're all screen mm. accurate, like stormtroopers and stuff. Yeah, I was about to um, say, so it's like the Lucasfilm version of the 501st. Uh, it's the, so the 501st is oh is there it's the light Lucasfilm? side version of the 501st oh oh yeah. i'm picking up what you're putting down you set it down on the ground and i picked it up and now i understand okay yes yeah they've got <laughs> they've got like three factions and they're all part of the same thing but yeah the mm -hmm. 501st is the dark side rebel legion is the light side and i think like mandalorian mercs are all of their mando characters so if mm -hmm. you want to meet like wow yeah, Mando or Bo Katan or something like that. They send someone from Mando Marks. I didn't know about that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you have other cosplays? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, I was beginning my story. So she, <laughs> yeah, she's an officially licensed Ray, um, but she started out doing Padme. That was her first big, accurate cosplay. Um, and she was too young. We were, we were like 16. Um, but she was too young to submit to the Rebel Legion because you have to be 18. Um, but she was doing Padme and she needed an Anakin to go with her. So, I was like, all right screw it looks simple enough um so i put together she had the the lake dress from attack of the clones um i didn't coordinate exactly i did uh revenge of the sith anakin because i like that costume best um but i built it uh sort of like with hot glue and gumption um and it was it was pretty crappy and i've thrown away most of the pieces because most of them were like pinned to this weird tunic i had underneath but that was one of my that was one of my first big cosplays and i also have a princess anna cosplay from frozen which is oh. the first cosplay I ever ever did um you could pull that off yeah you can pull that off well you got the hair yeah. for it i i had a blonde streak put in my hair because i was a, a unlicensed party princess uh, in like middle school <laughs> oh wow yeah we went to we we did frozen themed birthdays because it was 2014 and that was the rage this kind of still is the rage it is still the rage but you know I, it was the the rage yeah at that, that time. was the yeah we did like like six and just in our neighborhood alone. oh wow yeah man i i've been wanting to get into cosplays i just don't have the time to do it but i've been wanting to get into them so bad like i feel like i could pull off a cal kestis one really oh, really well yeah. oh like, that would be so much fun that and i know you can go out and buy them too and like there's like really Those are good expensive accurate. yeah they are really mm. expensive but i feel like pff, maybe it'd be worth it but yeah. uh but yeah oh, cal kess is on my list yeah it's i mean that's that's like a you know he's got a great costume i mm. also have a um a, a mission vow from knights of the old republic that i am oh. to work on the blue twi'lek girl mm -hmm. um and i'm hoping to take that to star wars celebration uh in 2022 oh, wow. That would be incredible. I know, the only reason I know though. who that is is because of Galaxy of Heroes. I'm not yes. the most educated person on Old Republic, but that game exposed me to a little more Old Republic kind of characters. That's what got me into Old Republic in the first place is because I noticed I was looking at like the new characters and they mm -hmm. had Bastila and Revan and there was something about a force bond. And I was like, wait a damn, that sounds familiar because I was like, hey, 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 that's the same thing as Ray and Kylo have going on um it's like one of their abilities basil is like mm -hmm. more powerful if revan is on her team um because of the and it's called their force bond is um, force bond not a new thing is that something pulled right from legends it literally i the dyad quote unquote okay. um like is different technically okay. um but basil and revan they do have like a force bond in in that they have like shared dreams um and that sort of thing and they can like talk to one another in their dreams in the book in the game it's like used as a plot device to show like you're both having premonitions about this you are connected in this hmm. story and you need to work together to find these like pieces of this map um but yeah it's so a lot of the inspiration i think from uh, of uh ray and kylo comes from bastila and revan because they are like a romantically linked sort of a dyad in the force um wow yeah That's they amazing. end up spoilers for knights of the old republic depending on how you play it because it's it, you know it's open world ish um mm -hmm. I, I no open world's the wrong term for it it's open story you it, there are like five endings that you can get okay um you uh can end up romantically with bastila um 
and uh the, the the official like canon ending is that you do end up romantically with her um and it's it's just like such a great love story to be honest really? it's really yeah it's really fascinating so i highly recommend playing kotor so it breaks the mold of toxic star wars relationships maybe or is it does it not i mean i would say so the, here That's the good. thing is their relationship is kind of based on a lie Oh. So <laughs> then you've got that because she, uh, I don't want to spoil Knights of the Old Republic for you, um, but uh, th there's, there's a, um, there's a, there's a lie involved in their relationship there. Oh, and no. I'll leave it at that. Oh no. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing a, a full Bo-Katan costume? Cosplay? I thought about it. Somebody once so offered hard, to though. help me pay for one, and I was like, yeah. "Yes, please." But then I don't think <laughs> that ever panned out because um, I think he looked up how much it was and was like, "You know what? Maybe not." Mm. Um, yeah, no, it does. I would Oof. love to at some point, but yeah, I, I got my hair cut short last summer, um, mm. and all of a sudden, everyone was like, "You look just like Bo-Katan," and it, you know, I was like, "Well, now I got to cosplay yeah. her." It but, was cool. It was really cool seeing Bo-Katan and the Mandalorian again. I mean, yeah, the first time we see your live action played by the same voice actress. I thought that was incredible. I to do love that. that. I think that's such a like a great nod to the origin mm -hmm. of that character, who's like just this. I mean, really, relatively minor Clone Wars character, and she just yeah. became such a favorite. Yeah, she went from like war criminal background to beloved character. Yeah, but like, yeah, I was really excited to see her. I. I was not expecting Bogotan to show up. So when she showed up in that third episode, I just like, oh, oh, what's happening? What is happening? Is Sabine there? I know I oh, cheered oh. out loud. And that it takes some it's it takes some some doing to get me to mm. like audibly react to a TV show. Movie it's a little different because you're in the theater with all these other people, mm -hmm. but no, yeah. I I I was like, ah, you know. Yeah. Mandalorian had me quite a few times. Cobb Vanth, I freaked mm -hmm. out because I mm -hmm. I'm an avid book reader, so I knew who Cobb Vanth gotcha. was for a while. And the fact that they brought him like this book character, this when I say minor, minor like in the book he was in, it wasn't he wasn't even a part of the main story. It was like this like little thing where they go off to a different world that's not relevant to the entire story, and they just got this little story about Which him. Which book is it? Aftermath. Okay. I, if you haven't read the Aftermath trilogy, I highly recommend it. It's my favorite Star Wars trilogy they've made. Mm. Uh, a book trilogy, anyway. It's about right. the, um, it's about this, like, ragtag group of people. Um, includes Snap Wexley from the uh, sequels oh, as a child. That's why everyone loves yeah. Snap. That is why okay. everyone loves Snap, and <laughs> that's why I sobbed at the rise of skywalker when they just killed him off i was like uh, no that's oh my favorite book character just gone uh, like that and then yeah later in the book he he's very close with wedge later mm. down the book series because uh him and his mother get uh, romantically involved so it's kind of like a stepdad oh my god and wedge shows up right after snap dies and i'm like wait your stepson just died and you have no idea and it just shattered my heart led just be like mm -hmm. one of my favorite like characters like just obscure characters and i was i was a mess during the rise of skywalker i was a mess i oh me too no movie has ever made me cry as many times as yeah. the rise of skywalker has it like every time i watch it i you know it doesn't matter how many times i've seen it and i like put off watching it for so long oh, really? because i'm like i gotta mentally prepare for this this is gonna be a journey you know <laughs> oh i did Since opening I night think. opening night was not well I, I i i um i did watch it as soon as i could the first time i just mean like mm -hmm. when i rewatch, uh, i i, okay, I avoid I it for a while you know even though i love that movie i just like i have to build myself up to it i have to hype myself up to it um because i know that it's just it's just gonna absolutely mm -hmm. kill me um the part that get i mean like han showing back up Ben Did calling him dad. I, I weep. Chewy grieving Leia. I weep. I, ah, chills. I ah. And, and then Ben dying. Oh, it gets me. It gets me every time. I wish they didn't do that, man. I think it would have been cool to eventually tell, like, maybe sometime down the line, because they said, oh, we're stopping at six. Now we're doing three more. They mm -hmm. said we're stopping at nine. 
maybe they're gonna do three more down the road i don't right. know but it would be cool to bring like adam driver and daisy ridley back together but i don't I know. know that would be so great but at the same time uh, i do like that and even though it, yeah. it absolutely kills me because i love them together as well mm. i am a raylo shipper um it, uh, yeah, i could do with or without it it does not bother right. me either way that's how i feel yeah about it. It, I mean, I, I really love that. I think that their character dynamic is one of the best parts of that trilogy. Yes, um, I do agree. So I, you know, I, I, I loved seeing that manifest itself. And I kind of thought it was the perfect ending for him and for them. Um, for mm. him to, you know, a- after betraying her trust and her, her belief that he could really do good, he finally comes back and he finished what Vader started, which was, mm-hmm. you know, I mean yeah sacrificing himself for what the one he loves right and good yep. and, you know yeah the yeah. woman he loves and it it just like it it it, it hits for me it was, it, especially it was because i had spent years fighting for my life on the internet over the fact that i thought those two were going to get together there is something <laughs> that riles people up so much about it and there's like i don't even know it there are some things that like male toxic fans are mad at mm-hmm. and there are some things that female toxic ma- fans are mad at and i feel like raylo is just like the <sighs> part for the mm-hmm. female toxic fans they hate it they hate it they hate it um and the, you know they'll bully you over it and I, you know i got sent like threats on tumblr in 2016 because of it what oh Good my Lord. god people are Man, insane on the internet like oh, no man. you it, this this re- re- uh, relationship between these two fake people is abusive, and thus you deserve that. Like, wow. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Um, this podcast, all feelings are valid. You can feel whatever you want about Star Wars, but we, yeah, <laughs> that's what we do no on after this podcast. Sending, no threats. No <laughs> threats sending. No, like, if you think Raylo is absolute trash, your feelings valid. If you love Raylo, it's fine. It's valid. Yeah. Like you don't have to like the the ship yeah. that I like, but please, like, stop yelling at me for it. My God! And then, I might, yeah. yeah, I might get some crap for this, but I wanted to see Finn and Poe. Oh yeah, that was oh, the I ship I wanted. Did, to be honest, that's what I wanted so bad. I did not care about Raylo. I just wanted Finn and Poe. Mm-hmm. I'm like, gay representation in Star Wars is very much needed. The kiss right. in the background at the, the rise of uh, Skywalker didn't really like do it for me it was like eh, to be okay. honest you know, it was, as it was nice. a gay person it. seeing yeah. that two second kiss at the end yeah. of rise of skywalker did also make me cry really it, I, it was it was a yeah. scrap of representation but mm-hmm. it made me sob that, I, that's how starved yeah. we are yeah i'm per- i'm bisexual myself and so like to see that on the screen of be like oh that's that's really cool yeah mm-hmm. but i noticed it the soon like as soon as i saw it in in the theaters i was like oh, whoa whoa <laughs> that's awesome but yeah but yeah, I wanted it was something, them. but yeah, I, I, yeah, that would have been the best direction to take mm-hmm. both of their characters in, to be honest. I think, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with Finn, Ray, and Poe in the future, like post Rise mm-hmm. of Skywalker. Like, I think the, the only bit of content we've got was the Lego holiday special. I know. And <laughs> I mean, so that cute. was great. Was so I love seeing, yeah, you know, Finn hanging out mm-hmm. being like a, a padawan i thought that was sweet yeah um but yeah i mean i would love to see something canon and i don't think we're gonna get that for a long time which sucks mm-hmm. because they're really honing in on these like you know the the post fall of the empire era mm-hmm. and I, I think they're gonna do like sort of a political background prequel for um the sequel trilogies because mm-hmm. the sequel trilogy because i think that not that that's like a movie that they're gonna do but i think like rangers of the new republic is gonna serve as that if if rangers of the new republic is still on i heard a rumor that it was canceled i heard that they're taking cara dune's role out of it and they're replacing it with like, hera yeah that i've also that's heard what i've that heard something i don't know more if that's recent true. saying that they might have canceled it and that could be, from be upsetting a total bogus mm-hmm. you know source but i would love to see my hera show yeah and i would yeah. love to see my build up to the to the first order i think that that's definitely i mean you know mm. that era deserves the yes treatment that you know clone wars gave to the prequel era uh there are some great books that take place in that era as well like yeah I, bloodline, I, I know about bloodline yeah the bloodline's really good aftermath is really good um mm. what other books are there i don't even know if there's any comics either there's the phasma book 
The Phasma rise book of, is Rise of Kylo Ren, Ren is one of my favorite comic runs of all time. I've I've just seen videos on it. I haven't read it myself, but I know oh all of them that's happened, and it's so good. But it is fantastic. I it makes you look at at Kylo, you know, mm. in a sort of a completely different light, as well as Luke, because there's mm. so much that was going on that he didn't know about. It yeah. just uh it's it's so good. And and there's this little corn uh, kernel, I'll say. Yeah, a little kernel of of hint towards the sequels because when he finally like truly falls to the dark side, Ray feels it across the galaxy. And oh. it's like woo, it's so oh. cool. I love it. Yeah. You know, for when it comes to comics, I want to see that oh, I want this so bad. You have no idea. But um, the era between four and five, that three years between four and five is chock full of amazing stories of our mm -hmm. original like trio. There's a whole comic dedicated to it. If that turned into a series where they mixed in the Vader comics, because the Vader comics mm -hmm. are my favorite comics. Mm. Animated series, hear me out. Uh? Be, oh, animate. Oh, oh. That's all this I want. Really I'll, I'll keep mentioning it in every podcast episode until I get what I want. <laughs> actually. But, Willing it into existence. That's will, what you got to do. It's exactly what we're going to do. And I, I want, want so something bad. like that for between um, uh, Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker as well. Mm -hmm. I would love to see what they were doing in that time because mm. I feel like there's stuff to be. That Leia would be content, fun. Right? Leia content. There we go. That's yeah. exactly what we can do. Have you read. um? Uh, Leia, it was like Princess of Alderaan, the book. I haven't yet. I'm I so it. I, I've I'm I've read so few Star Wars books, which is to say, I've read like half of Light of the Jedi, and that's like I the Star Wars books that I've read. I haven't yeah. finished it either. I'm like a third of the way through it, and man, I do audiobooks personally because I think mm -hmm. when well, they produce really high quality audiobooks, they add like music and sound effects to it all, so it's like. It's a whole piece of Star Wars media that I don't think gets a lot of appreciation. Mm, like, yeah. but yeah. Uh, ours, oh yeah, Princess of Alderaan. Highly recommend it. They do a uh, Holdo background. Oh or like yes, Hold, I've heard about Holdo that. and a Leia meet. It's really cool. Like, yeah, I I actually like Holdo. I know she's like one of the most hated Star Wars characters right now, but like she's great. I, I like don't her. Get that? I think she's cool. Like, I mean, yeah, she's a little mm -hmm. bit annoying. I will say because you're looking at her through the lens of Poe. Mm -hmm. So of course she's going to be annoying. He doesn't like his authority being challenged. Like what is what is any man? <laughs> <laughs> like I I don't know what to and that's the same reason that people don't like Mace Windu. It's like you're looking at him through Anakin's eyes. Mm -hmm. Like obviously he's going to be a stick in the mud. If he wasn't a stick in the mud, Anakin you know would ruin everything all the time. <laughs> Citizen. I won't yeah. forgive him for that one for calling his book a citizen. But she called mm. herself citizen first. She said, yeah. I'm not here as a Jedi, I'm here as a citizen. And he's kind of just like reminding her, like, hey, you said you'd back off, so back off. Yeah. You know. Man, I'm just I'm too big of an Ahsoka stan to forgive him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, as we're recording this episode, the Bad Batch is being released. The fourth right. episode just released a couple of days ago. What do you think of the Bad Batch so far? Are you enjoying it? I really liked this most recent episode, episode four. Um, I did too. I, it was great. I, I love seeing Fennec in that, you know, context of like um, just her getting to be a badass. It's, it's, you know, it's more of sort of the thing that we saw in Mando. And to be honest, I don't remember her in Mando season one very well. I, mm. I didn't stick with me. Um, but I'm loving this, this uh, idea that she's going to be like one of the primary antagonists because it looks like she's about to follow them across the galaxy. Yes. Um, and I'm so here for it. You know, I, I would love to see that. And I think eventually they're going to probably team up with her. That's my guess and my hope. Ooh, I like I like that idea. See, I'm a, I'm a really big Fennec stan myself. Mm. Mando season two, like the Boba Fett introduction episode where Fennec Shan or Fennec came back and just kicked ass. Just mm -hmm. cemented my stand in mud or in stone. Yeah. <laughs> but uh in cement. Yeah. Cement. Yeah. Uh yeah. But seeing her back was all amazing. I love Omega. Omega is just Such so much, so much joy just comes from her. I mean, I like, really like the way that they're taking this this new take on the like these 
hardened war people have to babysit a child now you know like we've seen that so many times we see we, you know grogu adoptive Ahsoka, space dads ezra yeah i like <laughs> so many space dads all the time you know i mean uh, hell you know luke and uh ray were kind of like that where he's like mm -hmm. oh my god i have to take care of this teenager now um and uh, <laughs> it just like it it was so different the, mm -hmm. the dynamic that you have because right off the bat he has more than a sense of begrudging obligation he has like a family tie to like okay technically i think you're my sister i have to take care of you like you're one of us mm -hmm. um and he you know he, he he never is like griping about taking her along um whereas you know kanan was like oh this mm, kid you know ah, <laughs> wish we could drop him off somewhere um and I guess Mando and Grogu were a bit like that, but mm -hmm. you know, um, I, it just it, it a bit like um, he he has a genuine care to protect this child, and it, yeah. it doesn't really like feel like that much of a burden all the time. I don't know. I I just like the fact that she is not this sort of snarky child that we've seen so many times um, in like Ahsoka and Ezra. Mm -hmm. She really, really, really like has an appreciation for what they're doing there and while she kind of has those same things of like i know you told me to stay here but i figured out a way to help so i'm gonna go and do that you know those same tropes tend to happen it, it just feels so fresh to me it does um, I, I, agree I can't entirely. put my finger on exactly why but i agree entirely i yeah. i think she's adorable i i really like the take of just like hey we can clone Django fett so many times why don't we just make him a girl like you could genetically do that so easily. And there's a lot of fans that are really upset about it, but you know, whatever, whatever, but I don't care. They'll be upset it, about I'm, anything. I'm a, yeah. But yeah, I'm really liking uh, Echo. Echo mm. used to be like my, my was my clone. Like I watched, I was one of the people that was watching Clone Wars um, every, every Friday when it was released back on Cartoon Network and how old was i so it came out in 2008 season three was when echo died so i was like 11 or 12 when echo mm. died so upset heart crushed little oh. middle school brendan was just crushed my favorite oh. character just blew up and now to see him back i'm just like oh 12 year old me's like back all excited to see echo um i like the bad batch like i was kind of like Eh, with them for in season seven but i think the mm -hmm. bad batch um show has improved their characters greatly oh so yes. much yeah it, it felt so like little kitty on the on the clone wars i agree um it, it, you know wrecker was like wow i'm gonna blow things up you know and <laughs> so I, it is. just like it was it was so much i just uh, was overwhelmed um mm -hmm. and i didn't really I, you know I, they, they kind of annoyed me I, they were like get out of the way reg and th those kind of things and you know it just i, I wasn't in love with them i was mm -hmm. like all right all right you got an attitude i get it uh, let's do the mission please and let's mm -hmm. finish these episodes so that i can see ahsoka and it um it just like it didn't it didn't hit for me because they really were in these categories of like kids tv show trope yes world like same as like the teenage mutant ninja turtles like you mm -hmm. could line each one of them up with one of the turtles like exactly it's so it's it's a really basic like trope to yeah, use yeah or like, like my little think... pony where you've got one who does this and one who does that and one you know i wouldn't know about my little pony but <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah but you know I, I mean it's just like a standard thing that kids shows do where everyone they, there are certain personality types that everyone has and um, I just like, you know, I was fine with it, I guess, but I wasn't mm -hmm. connected to it because it really felt like it was aimed at like 10 year old boys. I was like, all right, this, this, this part just isn't for me. Um, but then Bad Batch was so dark, like right off the bat. And like, I was like, oh my God, are we watching like, are <laughs> we're watching <laughs> Kanan's trauma unfold in real time. Like, a hit wow. home. A hit home. Now, like, I love Kanan. 
Freddie Prince Jr. tried so hard to sound like a little kid. It they was shouldn't phenomenal. have done it. It was great. I had so much, I was just laughing the entire time. Oh. I was like, I can appreciate what's going on. But like, yeah. Master, yeah. I brought reinforcements. I got 12. <laughs> oh, no, do you like there is a little also a little bit of a gripe that they retcon the Canaan comics for this but like mm-hmm. at the same time i'm like i'm okay yeah, with it i'm okay with it yeah. at the same time i don't know sometimes i get my panties in a twist about uh retcons like for i, I was so upset that they changed ahsoka's lightsaber color for like uh, two months and yeah, seven, that- like when i saw the trailers i was like it's supposed to be green it's green in the books Grr. and i was dog hey don't do that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, I, I just, I was so upset, man. I was like, wait, this kind of looks cool. I'm Dave Filoni. You were right. I was wrong. Just like always. Yeah. You know, it, it's a good contrast against mm-hmm. the, the background. And that's, that's the history of Star Wars is George Lucas gave Luke a green lightsaber. So it would look cool against the Tatooinean sky mm-hmm. in like Return of the Jedi. You know, Ahsoka now has blue lightsabers so that she can do her little pose in front of an ex- explosion and there's like good contrast and it looks pretty yeah yeah that's exactly what it was basically but uh yeah we actually talked to uh the episode i recorded before this to someone we mentioned the exact same thing about luke's lightsaber being green because of the sky oh and stuff so it's 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 all it's full circle at this point it, it's all coming together it's a cohesive season it's cohesive season second most hard question i'm going to ask you Mm -hmm. top five characters of all time you can start from the bottom or the top whichever you want to do all right let's see i oh i'm so hard um okay i don't know if i can put him in an order let me just spitball out some of my favorites first yeah we'll we'll throw out uh kylo obi-wan ahsoka Hera and like Luke and then I'll, I'll uh, let's see if I can order them I'll do <laughs> ah, it's, it's this hard is it's choice. really hard yeah I'll do I I'm gonna have to do Kylo at the top I think maybe in the order I said them really yeah maybe well Kylo I'll say Ahsoka no I'll put Luke then Obi Wan, then Hera. Yeah, I I'm I'm here for that one. Speaking of Obi Wan, Obi Wan show. Are you ready? I'm ready. I wish that they didn't name the show Obi Wan Kenobi, but so I'm original. ready. So original it is so original. I couldn't have made it better. What do you think? Your prediction right here, right now. What do you think it's going to be? Okay. Um, I think that we are going to see. I mean, we're going to see a little bit of, of young Luke, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. I know that they released a cast. Um, I know we're getting... Um, Baru and Owen are yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Uh, There's been like, I know... Hayden. Yeah, Hayden's... I think that's the only... Con- and there are other confirmed casts, we just don't know who they're playing. Right, yeah. And there was one lady who looked like she might be Satine mm-hmm. for maybe like a flashback. Um, I hope so. I hope so. So, man, that would make me. I don't need any more Star Wars for the rest of my life. I'll be happy if we see Satine. I'm lying. I know. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's a pretty. You know, it would be it would be solid. I don't know. I'm not gonna bank on us getting Satine, but I'm gonna say I think the premise is going to be kind of like mando in that obi-wan is fighting off various like threats on tatooine and then there's like some call he has to answer off world Mm -hmm. and he's going to be very stressed out about having to leave luke and then i think he's gonna make the decision to leave luke and it's almost gonna end very badly and then he's gonna come back you know back to tatooine be like i gotta stay here i'm never leaving again um yeah, yeah, and I, I don't think that he and Vader are going to interact, to be 100% honest. 
See, um, I keep going back and forth on that one. They're like, yeah, they we're going to get a, the we're gonna rematch get a fight. of the century. And, century. Just, and I don't know how I feel about that. I'm like, I might feel different after I see it, but like going into it, I'm like, eh, it's kind of like they haven't seen each other in 19 years. I kind of want it to stay like that. But at the same time, yeah. I'm like, it's going to be cool if we do see it. It would be cool. I just, I don't, I can't make it work in my head. I don't know how yeah. that would go. I don't know, like, under what circumstance. What if. Vader thinks he kills Obi Wan. I'm spitballing. Thinks he kills Obi Wan, and then he's like, "Presents I haven't sent since." And wait, like realize he didn't kill Obi Wan or something. I don't know. Maybe like that. I don't know. Right. So yeah, that's really I remember like that. that line is so funny to me because he has no expression. He's just like, "A presence I haven't felt since," and then walks away. It's <laughs> I I, it's it. so funny to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I I actually just rewatched. Uh, uh four and five not too long ago because i'm taking my girlfriend through the series for the first time ever oh, that's and exciting it is very exciting and so i was laughing i, I laughed at that part man side side track real quick um empire strikes back mm-hmm. watching it again i don't know what it was about it but i'm like didn't hit as hard i don't know why mm. i i'm like maybe nostalgia i don't know but yeah. anyway uh, where we were talking about Obi Wan Kenobi, yeah. So I think that yeah, Yoda in in uh, Empire is like maybe the shining star that that I makes agree. it endure for me. Um, yeah. but yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi wise, I just don't know what to expect. I I can't imagine he will be leaving Tatooine for long. That's my that's all I've got really. And yeah, and that mm-hmm. you know he's gonna leave and then he's gonna regret it and something bad is gonna happen and he's gonna be like. And, you know go back there and stay there forever um or you know until the time comes there are some uh comic issues of the star wars 2015 where luke finds uh obi-wan's journal and there's mm-hmm. parts where like there's whole comic issues to, to, to like him reading the comic or le- reading obi-wan's journal and the comics about the event he was writing about there's some mm-hmm. cool events that obi-wan had experienced on uh mm-hmm. tatooine i know there was one where luke heroically um tried to stop jabba's uh minions from stealing water because there was like this big drought on tatooine more than there already is and so jabba was basically claiming all the water on tatooine and doing a water tax right so luke's gonna get killed by these guys but he's trying to be brave trying to Mm. protect his water and obi-wan has to basically go and save him there's I like see that i wonder how old luke is gonna like do we know what year it's set in i don't think we do i, I think it might be around 10 years after empire or not empire revenge of the sith 10 would be really cute i really do want to see like a like a 10 year old luke that, that would be, be really cool cute. we got a little oh, we got a little taste of it in rebel so luke was in it well we saw luke run across the horizon in Rebels. what what you didn't you don't know that <laughs> wait what <laughs> do you remember when uh obi-wan and maul fought on tatooine yeah i remember luke being there there well uh there's a scene where obi-wan's riding past the lars homestead and you see luke you hear luke luke you hear baru yelling and you see just little luke like you don't really see himself you just see his like silhouette run across the horizon and man side note that episode is might be so top good. five episodes of rebels so good it's it's really beautiful, good yeah. beautiful choreography choreography of that fight just mm-hmm. hated it first and then i looked into it and i was like i see what you did because it's I, so short it feels anticlimactic mm-hmm. the first time but because the first time i watched that fight i didn't i hadn't watched rebels it, just people were posting it like on instagram mm-hmm. so i was like that's it that's yeah. the that's the rematch but then uh people were analyzing it and they were like no look he um maul tried to use the same move that he killed qui-gon with but mm-hmm. obi-wan had trained for that moment and he was ready and he yeah him. then you had uh sam witwer come in and be like yeah wait obi-wan's stances were significant too because he went in and like i'm ewan mcgregor no i'm alec guinness no i'm qui-gon Jin." have you seen that video sam witwer is great I haven't yeah oh so God. like so obi-wan intentionally like the reason maul tried to use that attack on obi-wan was because he used the same pose uh qui-gon did when he was fighting mm. maul and so 
he baited yeah. him into it oh yeah that's exactly what he did but yeah so okay we answered top five characters of all time what is your favorite piece of disney era star wars content I mean, it's got to be Last Jedi, right? Last Jedi. I just, yeah, that's, that's I, I can't, I can't put Rebels above it. I, you know, I just, I love it. The, that that movie so much. I um, I had a little fantasy in my brain the other day. There was somebody who was coming into the restaurant I work, um, who was named Ryan Johnson, and I was <laughs> like, "What if it's him?" And I was like rehearsing all the things I would say to him. And I, so I'm, I'm really in the mode of like, God, I just love this movie so much. I wouldn't um, say the Ryan Johnson. I would thank him. I he I probably think. gets a lot of crap from Star Wars fans, and he no, he needs to tell pick him it's me my favorite one of my favorite movies. Yeah. My God, you you're an artiste. I love you. Yeah, and then he makes other great movies. Knives Out. I haven't Phen- seen Knives Out still, but I, I really recommend need it. To. Highly recommend it. It's a good movie. Yeah. So you make some controversial TikToks sometimes, <laughs> and they're amazing. I think two of my favorite TikToks you've made, uh, there was a one where you're comparing people that don't like Ray being a Skywalker to, uh, first of all, uh, all, all, all valid, all opinions are valid about w- whether you think or if think it's okay for Ray being a Skywalker. I like it personally. I love the whole theme of like, you pick your family. It's been like a theme. Mm-hmm. They're all all, all all Star Wars. So I, I like it. Yeah. But you were comparing them to Pong Krell, demanding them by, them going by their numbers. <laughs> I saw that for the first time. I mean, you, you can't just... You the the thing is, normally to, to like the general pod, if I were talking to my friends, I would say like, that's the kind of the same thing as not respect, you know, not respecting what someone would like to be called. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing as like dead naming somebody who, you know, might be trans or something, you know, and it's, it's just disrespectful. Like, don't do it. Um, she doesn't want to be called that. So don't call her that mm-hmm. just because you think that she doesn't deserve to be called the other thing. Um, but those people don't care about that. You know, the people who I was trying to speak to are like, edgelords you know yeah. nor slash mall they're not going to care whether i feel like it's sort of a disrespect to adopted people or trans people they mm-hmm. they don't care about that yeah so i'm like what what you do care about is pong krell and th- i mean he also did that same thing he also would not call someone by the name that they've chosen there you go if that's the road we need to take to get you to see that that is disrespectful <laughs> fine i can do that i love it man one thing that's not valid on this podcast is uh, not calling people by the right pronouns. That is not valid on this podcast. I mean, yeah. The other TikTok you made, and you kept it as like a running joke on your um, TikTok, is Luke being gay. <laughs> he is. Do you want to go through uh, for the podcast of, of like the reason you think like, Luke is gay? I don't, Maybe the least solid, bisexual. I don't have a solid piece of evidence. It's a vibe. I no, know he is in my heart of hearts. <laughs> I just, I feel it. He, you know, I mean, yes, you could point to the fact that like he's well dressed, especially in like Return of the Jedi. But personally, I don't think that that's strong evidence. But I think that it is like mm. a little bit of like a code, you know, like a look, he's chosen his shoes well. Interesting. What else can we glean from this? Perhaps the fact that he just has those vibes in general. I don't like vibes. there is no there is no piece of hard evidence. The only piece of hard evidence ever for someone to be gay is for them to tell you that they're yeah. gay. Like I, and he's not gonna do that, but he I just gay until proven straight is what I always <laughs> say. I'm going to use that now. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Uh, and he, you know, there is actually now a, a canon book where he does have a female love interest. So I'm yes. shifting to the bi train for Luke. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't I would wanna... love for Luke to actually be bi. That would be chef hands. Right. Italian chef hands. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually do believe there is, they've, they, someone has gone up and asked Mark Hamill, is Luke gay? And Mark Hamill was like, it's like sure if, that's sure, about if he, it's if you want him to be gay he's gay i mean because it was like um he said something about like uh some people have a hard time coming out and so if luke is something you can use to help you come out then of course of course he is i think that's exactly what he said yeah and you know i was if, like if that's something you you feel in your heart that yeah it's like media is made to be interpreted and i think mark mm-hmm. hamill gets that 
where you know a lot of star wars fans do not and they're like no my interpretation is actually law um and it's like it's subjective though art is subjective yeah. and you know no one has ever said luke is a heterosexual <laughs> thus if i want him to be gay he can be like <laughs> <laughs> i love it it's so and also great. there's something just so coming outy about like the hero's journey narrative as a whole which is you know famously what um uh, a new hope is i just think like the you know leaving your this comfort of the, your old life behind and um you know embracing a part of yourself that you maybe had suppressed or you didn't understand i i feel like that you know i mean it resonates for a lot mm -hmm. of people um especially i think elsa from frozen like let it go is like very much a coming out anthem you know and she has a total hero's journey thing just, yeah. just like it. it just like it i just feel like those stories represent that experience in a fantasy context and thus that makes me feel like i can confidently say this is if we can't have real representation let us at least have this let us have our theories yeah funny it's funny you mentioned let it go like i had to sing that song seventh grade choir when it was in the craze oh never gonna forget that anyway <laughs> speaking of representation isn't lando's pansexual right mm -hmm. well that's one of those it. things i i like that i love that a lot um i think that pansexuality makes a lot of sense in the star wars universe mm -hmm. because you know probably infinite genders um and, yeah <laughs> i simply though wish that they had put their back into it you know like kids it's not a thing in the movie it's just something that they i almost want to i don't want to say it's pink washing or you know like the slap a rainbow on it and call it good type thing but at the same time you know it's great that you can say that and be like yeah lando is pan because he dated a robot which sure i guess um but it i wish that they would represent it in more than just like show rather than just telling it, it with some of the representation you know like how disney keeps coming, coming out with their like their first gay character quote unquote and they've done that like six times and it's never really been like a significant character or character or like part of the story at all mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, I, I don't think that the story has to be about that character being gay by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. It's probably best if that's not a main focus. But you can't claim that you've done so much for representation if you've only said it and you can go back on it whenever you want and you don't actually have to depict anything. Yeah. Like, I don't think we're at the stage yet where we can say, don't make it about them being gay because that makes being gay like, you know a, a a showmanship thing i think that we just we need to like demand show us somebody being gay at least one time and then we can be like okay but that's not their story so let's yeah. move on just just once just what like yeah. i don't know we can we can say yeah lando is pansexual down the line when we're just you know t peppering things in but i think we what we need is like solid representation right now mm -hmm. where we're actually being represented in media as opposed to like in a tweet yeah. confirming lando calrissian sexuality that would be amazing i just think it's so, sometimes it's like <sighs> what well, i think regardless of what you do you're gonna piss off a lot of star wars fans and that's just i think right. the unfortunate like the unfortunate reality of our community at the moment mm -hmm. and i think uh people like creators like you are doing a huge service to the star wars community and voicing these amazing opinions but like yeah i think i completely agree with you we need more representation like talking back to our earlier conversation like finn and poe i don't mm -hmm. i think it was obviously on the table i just think they didn't want to pull the trigger on it i think that was the yeah, exact situation was, they, they they you know had a little bit of a, a moment of cowardice i would say um when it came to like actually doing it and i think they were willing to queer bait um you know but they they you know just to get people to come in maybe but they i don't think they ever really had any intention of doing it um because you know uh what they, they've changed like who finn slash poe slash ray whatever wanted to end up with maybe like 
several times depending on the director because Colin Trevorrow was supposed to be the director mm-hmm. of episode nine yeah and he his pitch was we're just gonna skip forward a couple years and Ray is just dating Poe no explanation so that's why Ryan Johnson set up at the end of Rise of Skywalker mm-hmm. Ray and Poe meeting and there being kind of like a flirty moment even though it doesn't make any sense um despite Ryan Johnson's vision was clearly Ray with Kylo because that was what he was seemed to be setting up a lot of in um in uh The Last Jedi and then you know uh J.J. Abrams's vision to me it seemed like he was setting up Ray to be with Finn and you know everyone's just getting tossed around and then you know Ryan Johnson said okay no to Ray and Finn I like Ray and Kylo and let's but let's give Finn a love interest so Rose and then Rose got tossed out and it just like it's all over the map these these love stories and I guess that's realistic because you know life and love are messy yeah but I wish that you know there had been not that and I I feel like at no point they were willing to let people believe that Finn and Poe could be together because it, it built up hype. Yeah. I think that that was Oscar Isaac really being like, no, <laughs> Finn and Poe should be together. <laughs> I'm going to put all of the chemistry and charm in the world into this scene. And it worked like a charm. It was great. But unfortunately, he's not the writer. Mm-hmm. So he can only do so much as an actor to give us that story. And, Oscar. you know, eventually they wrote in a female love interest for Poe because... It just, it's messy. And yeah. it's... I, I was I think, so iffy about that. I was like, eh, eh, it just feels like forced, like love interest yeah. for Poe. I was like, eh, whatever. Just and then I, it was Jana supposed to be Finn's new love interest? It, it's just confusing. That, yeah, like, what? I'm just now thinking about this. Oh, no. Brain hurt. Pain. Okay. I, they've just thrown so many combos out there. And I wish that they had just you know, picked one. At least they 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 end up following through with one. I think there is a through line for Ray and Kylo through all three movies. That's the only one where there is a through line and also a conclusion. Like, and it comes to anything. You know, I, it just the the romances I think were kind of poorly handled. Um, yeah. In the trilogy as a whole. I don't think every character needs a romance romantic yeah, partner they, either. They really like you don't need to force one. Know. You don't need to force one into every single character. Like oh, I was about to say Obi-Wan didn't have a romantic interest, and then I was like, oh wait, Clone Wars. Eventually. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah, he but... had one in the in the uh TV, but not in the movies. There's no hint of it think, in the movies. Yeah, I think a, a romantic interest is a really good way to get people to care about a character mm-hmm. if there's a relationship at stake. But yeah, you kind of have to be like, th- there can really only be two two romances in a movie. And I guess there are in each of the movie two romances, but it's two. I mean, Force Awakens, there's not really any romances. Maybe Lay and Han. Oh, Lay and Han. Yeah, but that's an established thing. Yeah. So you don't have to get people to buy it because they already do. Um, but I mean, yeah, like Finn and Ray, I guess, is kind of a thing in that movie. Mm. Um. And it it's fine, you know, it's a good, it's a good, they have, like, fine chemistry. But no one was really that interested in seeing it continue, you know, the online support for it was like, yeah, I like them, they're cute. But then a lot of people were like, hey, how about Finn and, and Poe? Or hey, how about Ray and Kylo? And, you know, it, it just, it, it wasn't what the people wanted, and they sort of allowed that to dictate their choices going forward. I remember, so I talked about earlier how my girlfriend and I were watching the Star Wars for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying, like I said, Empire Strikes Back didn't hit the same. I remember Mm -hmm. why it left such a sour taste in my mouth. She was, my girlfriend was pointing out how shitty Han is too late and how 80s like misogyny is. it, It is so misogynistic. And I'm just like, Oh, I'm just now noticing this. This is really bad. Oh. Yeah. I never really like loved them to I I always liked mm-hmm. them together and I bought yeah. it. I you know, it was more it was much more interesting than like even if they weren't related, Luke and Leia would have been. That's like that's that's kind of taking the easier <laughs> road out. Even if they even if they weren't related, that's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. You know, in the same way that like I don't know, Aang and Katara in Avatar The Last Airbender. I was like, that's so obvious. <laughs> yeah. Love love Avatar so much. Yeah. This is, yeah. Yeah. 
um, but so then, happy with you know, it. Leia and Han is a bit more, it's an interesting dynamic and that is what makes it work. Is it a healthy relationship? I think not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So. Even like, I, I think they describe it in the books too. It's like a not like they lay and Han separate, I think at one point. Yeah, they do eventually yeah. kind of over the fact that, you know, that yeah. their kid is not doing okay. Yeah. So yeah, not healthy. Not Star Wars is really bad track record of unhealthy relationship. Hera and Kanan it's are about just it. Kanan it's, and it's Hera, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 about it. There's the only yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say that Ray and Kylo have an unhealthy romantic relationship because they don't have a romantic relationship until yeah. the last five minutes of that movie. And you know, there's no room for it to be unhealthy yeah. in there. Yeah. I don't think it would have been unhealthy. I think he would have, you know, done everything he possibly could have for her. But, know. you know, we're never going to see it. <laughs> I don't know. Did you see uh, Adam Driver in Marriage Story? Yes, but Pretty then in, in, a same, <laughs> in a Marriage Story interview, he was asked, like, do you think Kylo Ren would be a better husband than this character? He was like, oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> what? I didn't hear. I need yeah. to look this up. He said but... he would be very gentle and understanding. In a, in a... Adam Driver is pure. He's great. I don't, he's, he's a phenomenal actor. I hope he comes back to Star Wars. I know he probably won't, but I really hope he does. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think he wants to distance himself from it, you know, mm. do his Oscar. The same thing that Natalie Portman has yeah. done, really, where she's like, I want to be a serious actress. I'm not going to go to Comic Cons. I'm going to be in Oscar bait movies, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, it's unfortunate because, you know, she's she does play an iconic character. And the community kind of doesn't really have her as a, you know, she, 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 it feels like she isn't really interested in returning to those roots and she's going to continue to play mm. you know characters in the mcu but she doesn't really have much interest in like interacting with that community it seems which is unfortunate yeah we were lucky to have uh, i can't remember her, the name of the voice actress but the voice actress for padme does such a phenomenal job yeah she also voiced mission vow does she really yeah she wow. does full circle full circle yeah. Oh, yeah, quite again yeah oh boy man why do you know her name i can't remember it off the top of my head i don't head. remember her name off the top of my head yeah well didn't natalie portman come back to do like a skip she's like say what you have to say about the motherfucking prequels or something like that yeah didn't she, she come did back? that kind of recently that was the only thing she basically the thing is she hasn't shown the prequels to her kids um Oh, oh, I saw this interview. Yeah, she went on like yeah. a talk show and talked about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I mean, she went on and she, it was a continuation of a skit she actually did while promoting promoting a movie in like 2005. And Andy Samberg was in it as well. And, hmm. you know, I mean, it, just an old SNL skit that she had already done where it was like, edgy Natalie Portman, <laughs> rap goddess Natalie Portman. Oh, and no. so that was the continuation of it. It was like, I'm edgy. And, they, you know, the, one of the jokes was, like, I'm going to be edgy about Star Wars. But, I, you know, she she just tends not to touch it if it's not a joke, which is kind of mm-hmm. bad. And I wonder if that, you know, if the fan reception to those movies has driven her away from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. I know it, it drove uh, Hayden away for a long time, but Hayden's coming back now. But I think yeah. a lot of fan like newer fans or like younger fans have really grown warm with Hayden and I think like prequel mm-hmm. memes and stuff like that have a lot to do with it and yeah like the prequels are so memeable for like yeah and you know I mean the prequel meme community like sometimes they're they're sketchy in terms of like mm-hmm. you know crapping on anyone who has a different opinion or yeah. anyone who you know doesn't worship the prequels but yeah I mean you have to think back to like they were the underdogs for a long time. The prequels were the underdog like mm-hmm. media that everyone, you know, got shit on for enjoying. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, they, you know, it, <laughs> they did a lot to erase toxicity in the um, in the Star Wars fandom. The only problem is then they went they on to perpetuate that toxicity in the <laughs> new media. So yeah. it's like, yeah, it's a it's an uphill battle. But yeah, it's really it is really interesting because my my supervisor at where i work now he's in his like he's in his 30s and so he does not like the prequels or the sequels Mm -hmm. he's a big uh, i like he's like i like the original trilogy but Mm -hmm. then you go like younger than that 
you got the people that are like, yeah, I like the prequels and the original trilogy. I don't like the sequels. But then you got people young. It's like, I think it's more of a generational thing than anything. Like, yeah, you- I mean, not everyone who, I will say, I haven't heard of almost anyone who watched the prequels as like a teenager and enjoyed them. Um, like, mm-hmm. like Phantom Menace as a teenager, you know, like as they came out and enjoyed yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do feel like there are more people who were teenagers when the sequels came out. And I think that like online communities has a lot to do with mm-hmm. why people, you know, enjoyed them um, because there, there was fandom spaces for that. I feel like it was a lot of women who enjoyed it because, you know, there I, again, there were so many romance options <laughs> that ship culture really took off within that, you know, yeah. the Star Wars sequel fandom. And I feel like that's like female fans just really get attached to ship culture for some reason, Mm -hmm. which is a dumb, like, I feel like I'm perpetuating a stereotype just by saying that, but it's just the truth um, Mm -hmm. is that, that, but you know, that's ship culture is predominantly, you know, run by the gals. Uh, I'll hop in there sometimes. I'm like, I'll hop in there sometimes. I'm like, yeah, it's fun sometimes, whatever. (laughs) But people who get really invested in it tend to be women. And it just like, it was really interesting to see that this was like a a very open space for like new female fans to really sort of get into, especially because there was like a hinted at queer romance in the first Mm. one. There were a lot of like young queer people who were, you know, brought into it because of that and really started interacting in the fandom by way of Storm Pilot. Um, And it just like, it it opened up a lot of doors for people to love it because there was an online community and because ship culture was a thing that existed. That wasn't a thing so much when like the prequels were coming out. So maybe if those like platforms had been open and available there might have been more love for the prequels when they first came out mm-hmm. yeah so you know there i'm sure there were people who who liked it but you know they didn't have the capacity to like, find one another yeah i i that's a really interesting viewpoint that i really haven't heard before because maybe i just need to talk to more female star wars fans about that the sequels but that i have a I have very my, specific yeah. experience of being like a, a, a young woman in fandom mm-hmm. in like the early 2010s for sure yeah. it's a very specific viewpoint yeah it's it's a viewpoint that i have not been exposed to and i can appreciate and i'm thankful for that so yeah so we're we're about to the about we're about there we're at that time so do you have anything you'd like to plug uh, uh where can the good people of this podcast find you yeah, for sure. Um, so I am on TikTok at Discount Bo Katan. Um, and you can find me on my work there. Um, we have uh, <laughs> I host a podcast as well, the Star mm-hmm. Wars podcast, um, which is currently mm-hmm. on a um, hiatus between seasons. Um, but all of our season one is on YouTube and Spotify. Um, and yeah. Uh, about it i don't know i have an instagram that's also linked to my tiktok which you can find through there it's hm peterson <laughs> yeah you guys can follow me on twitter at brendan is dumb you guys can find me on tiktok at uh brendy the jedi and you can find this podcast on instagram at uh cloud city pod so yeah thank you for coming on it's been yeah, a, it's been amazing fun. talking to you yeah you too yeah if maybe this podcast goes somewhere you can come back we can talk yes, about course. we can talk about new Star Wars content. That'll be awesome. There's always so much. And we've got like such a lineup coming up. I'm so excited to be part of this fandom that, that we just have so much coming out now. It's, it's a golden age to be a Star Wars fan. It really is. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Of course. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of Cloud City Conversations. Our artwork is by Nick the Cody Art. Our music is by Joshi. And you can find all the links in the podcast description. Thank you.